Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to do this. Wee. Wee. Ah. Of the flesh. Okay. So, this is fun. This is um, building off of the last video I talked about where I mentioned the whole idea of like the frame blur, motion blur, motion detection stuff. This is a step further from that where instead of applying it to just a mask, a color, individual tracking, like, like just my skin or something, I'm applying it to the entire video. I have just, <clears throat> I have an input here from my webcam. See here, at Logitech Brio. That's how you do that, by the way. You put in... The content from here, there's various ways to add stuff. You can also drag and drop things like the presets and files um, if you've got them handy like in your browser. Uh, but this is also where you add the, the regular devices and stuff here. And if it gets stuck, this is also where you find the reload option, which is a handy dandy little deal to have. Um, once you do that, you come in here and you come and you get uh, one of these image effect images. There's many ways to get a buffer out which is what that becomes when you put it up in there. Uh, but that uh, this is the image one that I just tend to use. And uh, the first input that I made, layer A, was just the clean input, and then I immediately put it to buffer. What this does is it essentially makes it like an accessible one of these, but now it's a layer thing. And now this next guy says output from layer A, layer A being this image of just my normal webcam. Um, what's coming next is that I did that so that the next two things I would do would both get the signal from A and not be a continuous version of the self if I'm going to do the subtraction thing from it. Which isn't so bad when you do, but I have noticed a little bit of timing weirdness and things like you see how like the background moves completely when I get a little too epic. Um, there's a certain setting that goes a little too far that does that that is because the layers are noticeably different enough that the whole room is visible as motion even though the whole room isn't moving. Also, it's because the webcam keeps uh, adjusting white balance and stuff, and that counts as motion, but it should still be the same on both sides because it's the same signal if it's long as it's blah, blah, blah. But so that's what I'm trying to get done doing that. Um, so uh, and the color correction is just to keep it black and white because when you have an effect that has a secondary input, uh, like, for example... The uh, Pixelate option from Ulead. Ulead makes a lot of the cooler plugins that are used in here. I am an incredibly uh, bleh, I am incredibly appreciative of the dude's work. Pixelate in particular is pretty great. So I'm just going to do a new one on top of this. Just watch what happens. So when uh, you do a thing, bam, it does what you sort of normally expect. Oh, cool, pixels, neat. All right, which is, yes, neat. You can put a beat to it and that's a not, not 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 a not good effect right but it has this option it says use mask this is like what masks are for is that they get injected into stuff not on like side chains and in this case when <laughs> this is pixelization this is this is down sampling the image to say that the average of these pixels in this area comes out to being this color so then all the pixels in this area are this color and by default because the things are square they come out squares but if you give it another thing to calculate it by, well, now it's not doing anything because see, this is the whole point of the mask. See, right now it's receiving one of the masks. In particular, it's receiving a mask that I applied Bloom to. But let's go find a more. In fact, let's just apply it. This is what it looks like when I pixelate it according to just the straight up original input. So you see how that's happening? Now, what I find fascinating about this visual reality is that we're seeing a kind of like liquidated effect of of the stuff, which is a interesting because this is this is a digital thing, right? And b interesting because we are also familiar with this effect when we see it happening in MP3s. When MP3s have that lo-fi kind of low res effect, it has appearance of being watery, which is interesting again because the noise is jagged, the, the, and this is jagged too. It doesn't really appear like it because it, again, comes across that way, but it, it's very extremely jagged and um, making it kind of interesting and working it into something more meaningful um, is about p applying different like kinds of masks to it. So, for example, this is what the, the OG video application looks like. Uh, this is, um, oh yeah, and then the whole, the whole reason why black and white matters is because what the purpose of black and white as a, as a thing is about is that how it knows how, how to apply the effect 
like how how deep to do the, this pixelization on whatever it is you're giving it is based on luminance levels. So like bright is higher and darker is lower. So like imagine imagine every pixel is a controller and this thing is accepting every one of those pixels individual levels as a control value for its its values and it's being applied that way. So when we isolate our fun masks, so you, there's actually more than one. You can see two. What's up with that? So I made these two guys. Yeah, so back to the beginning. I made these two dude frame frame blurry dudes, and uh, the frame blurry dude's purposes because this is the frame blurry dude over here. So you can see them be all echoey, and the idea here is that the the things in the picture that are that are not moving should have the effect not apply to them. Let's get rid of this last guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the things that are not moving, they should just be invisible if they're subtracted. So that's what's happening here is that they're, um, I'm, I'm subtracting and I'm doing alternate. You can see how you can see inside my hand here and you can see outside my hand here. This, um, this thing, this, this, these two different masks are the result of just putting them in different orders in the subtract layer. The idea being that if you subtract from the blurred version, which now has more information in it than the non-blurred version, all that you have left is what the blur added. And if the only reason it blurred is because the thing moved, then the information that shows up only shows up when you move. This is this is the, the idea of motion detection. So it's black and white. What that also means is that now we have just naked, raw, positional motion data, which is great because it means that we can do these sorts of, granted, not very realistic or, like, finished effects. Like, this is, I'm like, oh, I'm the Flash. Like, I'm just degrading the entire, all that incredible work the teams on those shows do. But holy crap, is there a lot more to it than this? And but what's neat about this though is that I can do this without a green screen. I can do this without even doing a mask. I'm I'm doing a mask out of the motion blur stuff, but I didn't have to key anything out of my footage. This is just the raw webcam coming in. And I on like I did kind of spruce up my colors at the end here, but the uh, the inputs is raw, <laughs> and the processing is pretty raw too. Um, but that's the whole point of isolating. The important things like the idea of that you want to be when you're moving and whatever but then of course there's the other issues that if your if your material isn't really working out like you know the background is weird so it gets it kind of so you got to solve for that but the, that's this is you know the platform upon which you begin so here's the bloomed dude so we're saying before that um the uh the black and white levels equal like okay like how high or how low and let's go back and turn on our secondary pixelization dude so this is this is the one without blooms. You can see it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner. Let's go find the bloom dude again. Yeah, here we go. So you can tell this is the bloom dude because of the roundedness. That roundedness that's happening is the blooming action. Because what bloom does the stuff. Let's put a bloom on. Also a a Yulian effect. There's also another one that's not a Yulian effect, but this one is of the ones I need and like, so this is kind of epic right now, but uh, when you up the, like this is what happens, it gets all kind of blurry, but then you can do this threshold thing. And what the threshold thing does is that it only gets that like blurred up, shown up stuff when there's a certain amount of brightness, so it gets those sort of spotty ha 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 effects. And when that effect is put on the mask, that effect translates. Uh, ooh, I replaced the pixelate with that. Whoops. There it is. Okay. So when that when um that effect is applied to stuff, the the white and black value of like level is rounded as though as though we'd filtered it, essentially. Distorted it maybe? I don't know. So that's how you get this kind of like thumbprinty wood woody looking, which is like, you know, harder the harder I go on the effect. Yeah. Like that that looks better than most like early 2000s like video game effects of course this is actually early 2000s video game effects because this is what zge is ah. um so the uh what, the other thing that's happening um the, there's two different pixelate stacks and they're both they're both operating on the on and doing different things with different um those different masks so the, the innie and the Audi. Um, the any is cool because it's, uh, so th there's the blur guy. You can see he was kind of ghosty and, and, and like roundy, blurdy compared to the, the any, which as you can see is confined within my hand. That's the value of that as a mask is that 
not only is it you can see the background like bl blooming up and stuff not only is it getting that it's moving it, it's essentially like it's like a it's what it's that weird double exposure trick but it's happening in real time so that means that we're only getting inside the thing that did move and the brighter it is indicates more of it that it moves we basically created a motion heat map and then there's the Audi, which says where the thing moved was. What did it move past? What happened? To, what happened? Which is bo two both very important separated pieces of information. So right now, well, actually, both both the Uni and the Audi is being applied to the motion blur. So what what the motion blur even is? I'm gonna, I'll put a new motion blur on. So uh, not unlike the Pixel 8, the mo Julian's motion blur. So. Which is just a directional smear. Like, that's just essentially... However it's done, whatever it's done to do it, that's what's do. Rotate. Wee. So, in this case, I just made it sideways. Because in this case, there's not a lot of forward option. I'm not going up and down a lot. But I am doing this a lot. So, that means that the side-to-side -side motion looks pretty realistic. Um, and then there's this amount business. Now, amount... This is not... Like, this does have a mask input. But not... It doesn't have, like, a... A lot. Well, the mask input is pretty well that, but essentially, I'm giving it help. I'm, I have this X Y Z controller that is um, linked to the luminance value of the Inni and the Audi independently. Uh, you can see in the coordinates how like Z operates earlier a little than X and Y. It's because they're, they're sort of on opposite ends of like action and reaction, attack and decay, essentially. And uh, wow, it's actually a really good way to think of it. But the um, point moral of the story is that like they're, they're related but they're not but the important importance of the z is that the z is a little like it's immediate in terms of the effect is on which is why it's applying to the amount but the mask itself uh let's well in this case well i'm, I'm talking about this like this other guy like this this dude is the one that's being automated and then the mask itself is layer l which uh is the last available one i think yep and so that's the one that has the uh uh blurred Bloomy blur. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So it has the blooming blur, which is why it's doing the cloudy kind of arounded around the, the image thing, which in my experience is kind of what you want. So let's, let's actually look at some of the options. Like, So this is, this is without doing a new one. I'm actually just going to scroll through the options. So here's the, that, that, that layer. And here's if I had put in absolutely nothing. You get that. You see you see the mask of that like uh, default background image applied to it. And then here's layer H. Which one is H? I think H is the outside. Yeah, he's the outside guy. So you see that, like, it is sort of the same kind of accurate. I think, yeah, all right. And then there's layer L. Okay, that seems like the outside guy. So layer H might have been the inside guy. Oh, yeah, totally. All right, so here's a fun effect of the inside guy. Does it look weird that you can see my face through my hand? Like, isn't that something? And no, you can't see my face through my hand. But what is happening is that you're seeing the feedback of my face linger a little bit. Yeah, because I can like move ahead and it's just not there. But the coolness of it, though, is that it does sort of look like I'm going invisible for a second. Like it looks a little like I've masked myself out of myself, which is nuts because I don't have a green screen. That would be multiple levels of stuff. This is just this is real time. And no, it's not like terribly in control, but it's not so far away from that. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that's the the motion mask that's applying inside the body, which is where that blur is applying itself. Sort of why I went with L or not L. Where's the combo one? Did I make a combo one? I don't think I made a combo one. Or maybe that is the combo one. Yeah. Okay. I the bloom combines the two of them and then blooms, so it is the combo one, um, which is like it just looks like a normal ghost. <laughs> Uh, and then, um, that's what that, like, normal comp collection is. So here's G, which is at the outside, which looks kind of like what was happening, but you, in particular, still see the digital kind of fun pixelated result inside my hand because it's not being blurred. And, uh, then what was I? That looks pretty inside, but it's not very powerful. This might be the regular mask, one of the regular masks. So this is definitely one of the masks. Yeah. All right, this might just be run the regular levelers. Yeah, so the regular videos will show up like this, but then the amount being like, so that's just, that's the webcam. One of the reasons why I put the webcam in its own uh, layer to go through to everything is because if for some reason, if I put another instance in, it does this sort of squishy thing. I'm not sure what's up with that. 
Um, I really like L ultimately though, which is, it does cover the total area that both of the pixelated effects are both applied to. But what's interesting is that it fades away at a time that's different because of the amount being on the, on the other, um, on the other modulator from the other ones, which are on the outer modulator, the inner one and the outer one, whichever one they are on, the other one's on the other one. Moral of the story is that, uh, we still get the best of both worlds. We get like that kind of effect of like, oh, hey, it moved. And then also, wow, look at that weird distortion effect. But it also just goes away when I don't move. I have to move kind of a lot too. Like I put my hand real close to the camera. And what's interesting is that to me, this isn't more motion than if I do this. But you see how like that's just not doing anything now. And it's because I'm not moving enough screen space. That's what I have to think about now. I'm looking at the webcam right now, looking at how much I'm literally filling up the screen and that's like how I can make enough change to make it be like, oh, there's information now. Because I can be doing all of that. Like, oh, like, that's a lot. That's still kind of a lot, but like, not a lot. Not a lot, a lot. It's like I'm doing the effect less now. Versus now it's like a lot, a lot. And now it's, this is just stupid. So, the fi this is sort of in, in VFX land when you're sort of trying to use these things to do like shoot a, mu a music video or a TV show or something. The, the limitations of how like real it looks like at a certain distance is part of the equation of how they set the shot up. It's about like, oh, well, if you know it behaves this way or this way, then you just don't write the scene to be anything other than the correct distance of the effect like appearing right. That's how you get away with the fact that you can't really control a lot of some of the cooler things or that controlling the cooler thing is just prohibitively expensive. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, this is for the beta, the current FL beta that's available. I'll put this, I'll put this, um, or can I do that? I don't think I can. Crap. I can't actually give you the uh, project or the preset for this because it's not made using a copy of it I can give to people. Oops. Um, I hope, okay. Um, I already went through like the way that this was set up, but I don't think, oh yeah, there's edge attack in there, but that's just, it's not even on. Nope. Okay. Never mind. It's not even on. Um, I, th I really think I covered all the important bits. It's uh, the, the the only thing that's terribly complicated about ZGE is just getting the the layering system down so that you don't get caught up like with this stuff. So like this this looks all nice and finished and cool. Like oh cool, I set up my inner and my outer frame blur mixer, and it's just the thing minus the thing, and then there's the other one. That's just the other one. It's just the other way. Cool. Well, yes, but here's a problem. Which is that every time you add a new one of these layers, it changes the layer count. This is a buffer four and five right now, but it started at buffer one and two. And then every time I added a new one, it broke the image. It would just go black and there would be nothing there because the combos weren't right anymore. This image only shows up when it's that thing minus the other thing. And if it's minus something else, it's just black. Or it's just a solid image. And then because I'm, I'm having to drive really dark imagery really loud, technically, like blooming it up to this level just to be that visible is actually kind of a lot which is why the amount is almost off. And that would, so then the full blown image going into that would be suddenly very loud, going into very loud, <laughs> um, but brightness, which, which translates to effect now. So that's something like we have to, we're, we're using a little bit like how you use peak information audio in audio to drive other stuff like side chaining or whatever. Like we're doing this now, but like pixel by pixel, like effect information. And just like that, if you alter now the the character of the signal path going to the thing, you're gonna make it different, and it'll and yeah. So that's the issue with like getting a getting like a thing to this stage and then doing anything with it because one of the reasons there's just a huge long chain of master effects, which is essentially what this is. Like these these red and green sections can be thought of individually as mixer inserts that are all being routed into the master. Here's the master. And then, so, like, here's the image coming into the master, which is um, output A being affected by pixelization and stuff coming from all that other stuff from before it. And then there's the pixelization and the motion blur. And then the extra layer of pixelization, we just didn't demonstrate it at all. But um, if I were to be like, oh, cool, I want to do this extra cool effect now, or I want to add a buffer layer, or I want to smash it together with something else, and I want to make this a buffer, I can do that. In fact, watch what happens. Bam. What even is that image right there? That is not even close to correct. Let's look at what it looks like inside an output. Oops, image, cool. All right, we want Q. There it is. 
What is that even? And the answer to that question is, all of our masks are wrong. And look, it's doing exactly what I said would happen. <laughs> and the way you kind of you deal with this is you find the new um, order. Let's see, lower, higher, higher, lower. So six, five. There you go. So it creates the offset by one is what happens. So it's easy enough to fix it if you know that. And that's how you see now. Now all of this is in a layer, which is cool because some of these these effects like translate strangely because from here I can do things like, all right, cool. Now I, I could have made this a buffer blender. Bam, get it from cues. Here's my layer one as this guy. And I can layer this together with, I don't know. Uh, where's the this is the outer guy right yeah so then additive neat so now I have ghost effect and all the other junk on there that also still only shows up when I move um I could have just unvoided that all together don't add it up but why not let's add a displacement layer to it <laughs> freaky and weird as usual but that's that's like you know when you want to explore further effects the usual thing you need to do is to make put into a buffer. And then there gets to be a point where every time you do that, every single thing you added in the previous thing has to have its stuff adjusted. Sometimes. Sometimes. Other times it's beautiful. Other times it just works. But that's what's up. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.